We'll get to, at the end of this talk, which I think we'll get to today, I'm not sure. Um, you know, we'll get sort of yoga specific with it, but really the, the, the purpose of me presenting this information, especially now, um, is to really just sort of set the groundwork for how the rest of our body and why the rest of our body's systems, because we're going to talk cardiovascular system, we're going to talk pulmonary system, digestive system, um, you know, why they adapt the way they do and sort of the role that our nervous system has in those adaptations. Because really when we start looking at all these different physiological systems in our body, they adapt sort of in two ways. They adapt because of the physical use of them, and I always call it the, the use it or lose it principle. Um, and we can use muscles as a great example, right? If we don't use the muscles, they're going to disappear, and so they're going to adapt when we use them. But then there's also a, a, a longer lasting, and actually a short and a long term uh, neuro, uh, neural effect. And so today we're going to really sort of get into the reasons why and how the nervous system adapts to, to yoga. And again, I don't know if we're going to get there today, but um, so, you know, so really more of a ground laying sort of uh, lecture today, sort of put it, putting out the groundwork for the later talks. Uh, go ahead, Brian. Uh, so the first slide, so general nervous system functions, again, some, some definitely big, big picture stuff, but obviously our nervous system um, is responsible for controlling our internal environment. Uh, it works in several ways. It directly affects specific tissues and organs, but it also works somewhat indirectly by um, through using our endocrine system. So the endocrine system is a system of uh, tissues that release hormones, and then those hormones end up affecting other tissues. And we'll, we'll get into some of the details of the different uh, hormones released by um, tissues and how they actually work in this talk. Um, you know, other, other functions, yes, voluntary control of movement, spinal cord reflexes, um, assimilation of experiences necessary for memory and learning. So, you know, as we develop as humans, if we didn't have that ability, we'd be starting from scratch every morning and that would be kind of tough. Um, and really one of the overall purposes is to maintain homeostasis. And homeostasis is that sort of happy place that our body is at when we are unstressed, relaxed, in a very, very comfortable place. And so no matter what happens to our body, if we are doing yoga, if we're going for a run, if we're stressed out for whatever maybe distress we might be under, the goal of our nervous system is to bring our body back down to that place of homeostasis, again, that true resting place. And so the better we're able to get back to homeostasis, and you can put it in this term, we, the better we function as humans. The longer it takes us to get back to that place, the harder things like stress become on our bodies. And we will touch, touch on that a little bit later this morning as well. Uh, next slide, Brian. So the organization of the nervous system, uh, really two main branches, our central nervous system, which includes the brain and the spinal cord, um, and then the peripheral nervous system, which includes all the neurons outside of the central nervous system. And, I, and I, one of the slides I was going to add to this talk was sort of the anatomy of a neuron. Uh, maybe five or ten slides down the line I actually finally have a picture of one, but, but neurons are basically sort of the communication uh, vehicles of the nervous system. And they have a little cell body and then they have an axon that leaves it and touches another cell or another tissue and essentially it's almost like an electrical system where these neurons communicate with one another or with other tissues um, and the central nervous system works by activating or deactivating these, these neurons. Um, and again, later on there'll at least be sort of a, a, a picture version of a neuron that will give you that sort of uh, visual learning opportunity. Um, if you've never seen one before. Uh, within the peripheral nervous system, we have two main divisions, and we're going to get into some detail on them later. Um, the sensory division, and the sensory division, if you think in terms of our senses, is, includes the nerves that transmit impulses from our receptors back to the central nervous system. So if you think of vision, right, you're looking at the screen, well, what you see on the screen is affecting our afferent fibers, so these nerves from our eyes go back to the, the, our central nervous system and it ultimately process that information. So again, sensory division takes information from our senses, brings it back to the central nervous system. The motor division it works the opposite direction. So it goes from the central nervous system back to the effector organs. And so later on I'll be talking, I think, about some, some examples of how these systems work. But if you think of the, the ultimate reflex of, of putting your hand on a hot plate, right? Those efferent fibers, right? We have message sent from the central nervous system, ultimately, it's actually from the spinal cord directly, back to whatever muscles it is that entails our body to take that hand off the hot plate. So those are the efferent fibers. 
sending messages to our effector organs, in this case being muscles, getting our hands off that hot plate. So, uh, next uh, slide, Brian. And so, so the, these next two slides, I don't think either of them are new, um, just are a visual sort of representation of the nervous system organization. So on the left, you know, ner central nervous system, brain and spinal cord. On the right, we have our peripheral nervous system with the sens sensory and motor side. Again, I, I said we're going to get into the peripheral side a little bit in a little bit more detail later, um, especially if you look at the very bottom and you see the autonomic nervous system where we have the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous systems. Um, at the end of that sequence, and we're going to really sort of pick apart those two systems because yoga especially um, has such a dramatic effect on how those systems control our body. Bless you. Uh, next slide, Brian, please. And, and this slide is essentially the same, uh, is the same information, just has a picture of, or a, a crude cartoon of at least the central nervous system on there with the brain and the spinal cord, so we can flip past this one as well. All right, are we on the one with the brain? Yeah. All right, good. Um, so starting a couple of central nervous system, um, sort of more anat anatomical uh, definitions. Um, Got to talk about the brain at least a little bit, and this is about the extent of it, this slide and the next one. Um, our brain has four major regions, and again, we'll, we'll define them very, very crudely. Um, the cerebrum is the site of the mind and intellect, so it's pretty much up in the forebrain. This is where our, our smarts come from. Um, the diencephalon is, is a little bit, in, in terms of the nature of these anatomy and physiology talks, um, a little bit more influenced by yoga. And this is, the, the diencephalon has the thalamus and hypothalamus. Um, Within it, and these are where we integrate senses. And so, when we again, when we see something, when we feel something, when we hear something, within the thalamus and hypothalamus is where an, an, the initial response is formulated. Um, and we're going to talk about stress quite a bit later in this talk. And again, I'm not sure if we're going to get there today, but um, so when we talk about stress and how we perceive things as being stressful, because I could take any of you in the room right now and present you with a situation. Some of you might think it's great. Um, some of you might think it's quite stressful. And again, it doesn't matter what the situation is. Stress is purely a, a product of how our thalamus and hypothalamus interpret information brought to them. So the diencephalon, again, with the thalamus and hypothalamus play a huge in how our bodies respond to stress and what, our bodies, what kind of stress our bodies actually create for themselves. Um, getting to the cerebellum, uh, this is more on the motor control side of things. And again, if you were, when we start talking about yoga, um, you know, obviously coordination and, and motor coordination, the coordination of our muscles for, for balance, for strength, for all, all types of movement, um, the cerebellum is where motor patterns are refined um, and even stored to a certain degree. So as we get better at doing certain poses, um, it's in the cerebellum that these motor patterns are sort of stored and then are able to be refined and, and perfected ultimately. Uh, the brainstem is, it includes the midbrain, the pons, a whole bunch of other uh, components of the brain. Um, and again, it plays, uh, its major roles are within controlling some of our um, autonomic functions, the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system are, are very much controlled by the brain or from the brainstem. And when we talk about those specific systems, we'll get a little bit in more into, into their control specifically. Uh, next slide, Brian. So a, a, a pretty colorful cartoon of, of the brain, and again, just uh, you know, for, for your reference more than anything, um, make note that the diencephalon isn't one of the colored regions, it's sort of the, the skin colored um, section that falls just underneath the temporal lobe and the parietal lobe, so right we're in the intersection of the green and the blue section, um, is where we find the thalamus, and then just below that the hypothalamus, and again, we will talk a little bit about them uh, later today. Uh, Go ahead to the next slide, Brian. So moving away from the central nervous system, getting to the peripheral nervous system. So again, the neurons outside of the, the brain and the spinal cord. The information on this slide is, is redundant from earlier.